Hello and welcome to We Are Nantucket. We are grateful to the Massachusetts Department of Education for their grant for the after school programs and also to the Dreamland Theater Foundation. Who I am most grateful for are the students who have been doing the interviewing, learning the technique of interviews. I think the most important thing about this exercise and project is that the students learn to question and listen very carefully and ask follow-up questions of the adults and they learn a lot of other people's experiences. Hi, my name is Neely Gamble and the date is November 16th, 2022 and I am interviewing Paul LaPaglia. It's so good to see you here. Thank you, Neely. I'm very glad to be here with you. Um, I'd like to start by asking you where you grew up. I grew up on an island in New York State called Manhattan Island. I spent uh, over 20 years there on that island until I, my wife and I moved here. What were some things you'd like to do growing up? What did I like to do? Well, in, in, in the area I grew up in the Lower East Side, there were not many things to do outside. In the wintertime, like you uh, would go to school, but in the summer, it was, uh, they would call that uh, basketball. We all had courts, open courts, city courts. It's something called stickball, where you'd get a stick and you get a, a pink ball and you hit it. And uh, bike riding. And what's one of your favorite memories about growing up in New York? Where I grew up in, in the Lower East Side in a tenement environment was not the happiest time, but I was able to escape to museums. And the city of New York, uh, has great museums. What was your favorite museum to go to? Uh, there were two, the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Frick Collection, which was a private collection by a financier called, well, he, he lived there at one time and then when he passed, it was given over to the city and his collection of artwork is in his mansion. Where did you go to college if you I did didn't go? go. To, I didn't go to college. I went to a specialized high school called Music and Art in the 1950s. And I, uh, they saw I had, quote, a talent, mm -hmm, whatever. So I got a scholarship to a, a, an art school called the Brooklyn Museum Art School for two years. And I, was, I went there until I was uh, 20. Then I left. And that was my total whatever education formal education, as they say. And when did you move to Nantucket? Uh, my wife and I purchased our house in 1975, but we moved here in 1980, and we left New York. So I basically have been living here more. My life has been here on this island than I lived uh, in the island of Manhattan. And when you first came to Nantucket, why did you come? Was there a specific reason? Marriage. <laughs> Marriage. Yes, my, uh, my, Giovanna was, uh, she had been here prior. We came here in 1968 on our honeymoon. It's as simple as that. And I, I had never left New York City. I didn't know where Cape Cod was or, or an island called Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard or anyway. I just, all my life was on that island of Manhattan. And she said, oh, I, 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 vacationed there a couple of years ago. Why don't we honeymoon there? So I said, why not? Hey, at that time, uh, you didn't have to make a lot of money to honeymoon on Nantucket. <laughs> and we did not make a lot. We worked for the, we worked, I worked for the city of New York in the New York Public Library. And my, my late wife worked for Juilliard School of Music as a, in the library also. Would yeah. you tell me a little bit about your wife's well, uh, my wife, Giovanna, uh, her, her, before, her maiden name was Giovanna Joyer, beautiful Italian name. Her parents were, uh, like my, my father, were from Sicily. And they emigrated in the turn of the century to the United States. And her father became a very famous piano player for, for major bands in the 1930s, which was very big before you had television. 
there were bands, and they traveled all over the United States. But Giovanna, uh, her passion was ballet, and she became a professional ballet dancer up until her early 20s, but then what happens to a lot of dancers, they, she had injuries, and that her career was over. And uh, uh, she found a position in the dance collection at the New York Public Library, which was down at 42nd Street. And uh, that's where I met her in 1964. But Giovanna then started a, uh, when we moved here in the 70s, she opened up a ballet studio. She had performances here with her students. She had a wonderful career for about 15 years. And what was the biggest change you encountered when you came here to a little island from a other island, uh, but yes, a, city. a bigger island, or yeah, pretty bigger, but uh, uh, no buildings, no big tall buildings, and peace, meaning just the tranquility of Nantucket. No horns. You, if you live in the city of New York, you even today, if you go back, all you will hear are honking horns all the time because they honk horns, and there's millions of people just passing continuously. So it's, it's the peace that one can get by living on Nantucket. That's a beautiful answer. I love that. I love the peace. And what, what do you do now? Well, since I've been a young man, I've always painted, painted pictures. So I've been retired for going on about 13 or 14 years, and I, I just paint now. And I, and I, I volunteer at some uh, uh, strange places on the island. When you were growing up, did you want to be an artist? Yes, all my life, since I was a little boy. Because I always drew. And I had a difficulty in communicating verbally as a young boy, so I could communicate more at just drawing. Would you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, uh, it, it took a while for me to speak, to talk. Three, four years maybe. I was three, four years old before. My first words my mother would say was car. I loved cars. But I didn't start driving until I was 40 years old, because I lived in New York City. Taxi! <laughs> See, I, I kid around a lot, you know? Yeah. So I <laughs> what did you do when you first came to the island? You mean as a business? Yeah. In a business? I, 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 I met someone who was uh, an Italian gentleman called Franco Manzini. He's not with us anymore, but my father was Sicilian, and uh, he was from Milan, so we had this communication. He had a small business here, and he said, Paul, how about we start a framing business together? And there were like five or six other framers on Nantucket at that time. And it strictly was a summer operation. All framers, everyone made their, their money in three months, and then it was over. And I said, sure. And that's how it started. I opened up a frame shop here on Nantucket on Center Street by myself. And uh, I had it for, I don't know, 30 years till I retired. But the frame shop uh, was basically framing, but also I specialized in antique whaling prints and Nantucket memorabilia. Because I figured, look, what is Nantucket known for? Whaling and also the history of Nantucket. So, and I, I learned so much. From a kid from the Lower East Side, who knew what a whale was? <laughs> Yeah, I just brought this to show you what my shop looked like with me. Oh. See how small it was? Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> On Center Street. Oh, by the way, that shop was the second shop that Tony Sarg had. And in, in the 1930s, uh, on the uh, outside of the, the big window, he had all these incredible Tony Sarg images. God knows whatever happened to them. This is yeah, a good picture. But it has an incredible history, the, the shop. And, and Michael Vino now is, is there, and he's one of the last great scrimshanders in the world. Another thing before we leave, what's interesting, and you're so, so young, you, you, how can I say this? In life, you meet such incredible people, and you don't even realize it until you realize it. Is there anything else that you did in between your framing shop and coming to Nantucket? 
framing here or any business, especially my type of business, was very a short, short period of time during a year. After that, we would travel. We would go, we'd go to Paris usually, travel to Europe. And what do you do now with your free time? Uh, well, there's uh, two things made in my life now, because I'm alone. Of course, I have a daughter and daughter-in-law, but in the summertime, or well, let's say six, mon six months out of the year, I'm a volunteer, I would say, no, I can't remember, maybe six or seven years at the hospital fish shop, which has given me such an importance in, in I'll be honest, just being alive. Secondly is my painting, I paint. And I walk, because uh, this is so beautiful, beautiful island, beautiful piece of land in the ocean. I've learned so much about objects and history and, and being with people is so important, very important. Would you tell me a little bit more about your work at the hospital thrift shop? Uh, of course, yeah, let's see. The hospital thrift shop, uh, I have a table and when objects come in, what I do is re research them. And uh, then I hopefully give a correct value, but not what they should be, because we're not a, we're not a, a, a shop, we're the hospital thrift shop. So if you go online and you see this object is worth $100, you can't ask, you ask $40 or something like that. But Sometimes there are very special things that come in, so you have to be very careful. But in the last few years, the, the hospital sh thrift shop uh, has continued to grow financially for the hospital here on the island. The hospital thrift shop gave the hospital here in Nantucket uh, $600,000. We're getting a new MRI machine with that money and uh, doing something that is so beneficial to the island. But for me, and it's a selfish thing to say, I learn a lot. And the staff is, again, being with people. But there's, I believe, over 150 volunteers for the hospital thirds, because there's many shifts, and there's a Thursday, there's an evening shift. So, whoa, what, a, what an incredible group of people that do that, and they do it with a smile. Do you have any questions for me? Sure. I, I don't know. What are you, 12? I don't know. You're 13, 14? 12. 12. What are your aspirations? You know what I'm saying? What, what, what are you thinking for your future? Well, I want to do something musical. That's I right. You, did, you do I sing. Love, I do. Uh, I sing the anthem all around the island. Oh, fabulous. I, Wonderful. Um, I do a lot of theater at the Dreamland. So yeah, I, yeah. I definitely want to do something that involves a lot of theater and acting. Okay. Like an actress, singer. All right. Well, you know, there's a lot of literature out there. Again, you can go online. What I would do is, if you're interested in theater or music, voice, whatever, it's to start reading about it. You have to devote time to learning about the history of it and the past, which is the performing artists. Like, I learned about art by reading about it and seeing it. Is there any piece of advice that you'd like to tell people growing up everywhere? Uh, yes, it, it, it's to read. Read everything. You have to read books that interest you. Uh, if, you if you're interested in the arts, there's many, many magazines out there. Uh, if you're interested in traveling, there's magazines and articles that you, it, well, today online you can see that all. When I was young, or in the last 30 years, I was not available. Today it's all out there. That was my, um, as they say, uh, salvation as a young man because I came up from a kid in the streets and I had a passion for painting and history. That's a very good answer. That's Well, you know, you try your best. That's the main thing. Try your best in whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you for You're very welcome. Thank you for coming in today and thank you for My pleasure. Me interview you. My pleasure.